In this video, we'll be talking about multiple myeloma. So multiple myeloma is a cancer of the plasma cells. Plasma cells are transformed B cells that secrete a lot of antibody. So multiple myeloma is commonly associated with lytic bone lesions, hypercalcemia, renal failure, and acquired immune abnormalities. Initially, it starts in the bone marrow where there are several plasma cells secreting one characteristic protein known as M protein, which are non-functional antibodies. But also later on, it can spread into lymph node and extra nodal sites. In this video, we are going to talk about multiple myeloma in details. So before we start, let's talk about a quick mnemonic to understand all the important aspects of multiple myeloma. And this mnemonic is basically HRPAL. So this HR has uh, multiple myeloma. H stands for hypercalcemia. That means too much calcium in the blood. R stands for renal failure. P stands for plasma cells, which has clonally expanded in this cancer. A stands for anemia. And L stands for lytic bone lesions. So in this video, we would be appreciate all these uh, terms mentioned in this mnemonic. So let's talk about the symptoms of multiple myeloma. First of all, the common external feature is weakness and extreme fatigue. So there could be recurrent infection with bacteria and other, in, uh, other agents. There could be low blood count, anemia, low appetite, weight loss, sudden weight loss, decreased kidney function, which is very important in this context. Then there could be bone damage, bone pain and fractures in the skull. And these are specifically kind of like lytic bone lesions. It looks like somebody has punctured the skull. So it is generally found in old people. Generally people are having an age group of 65 to 70, but sometimes can, it can also occur in early stages, depending upon the genetic constituents that are associated with this disease. So there is strong genetic component associated with multiple myeloma. Generally, chromosomal translocation has been found to be associated. So IGH, which is located in uh, 14th number chromosome, can exchange strands with uh, chromosome number 11, where cyclin D1 gene resides. Cyclin D1 is associated with cell division. So after the relocation or translocation, IGH comes closer to cyclin D1. So there would be too much of cyclin D1 production. That means over proliferation would happen. Similar kind of exchange can happen between chromosome number uh, 6 and 14, where cyclin D3 gene is residing in six, chromosome number 6 and in 14, you know, IGH resides. Alongside these kind of chromosomal translocations, there could be involvement of CMYK, which is an important transcription factor regulating genes, which are, reg which are all involved in the growth, survival, and proliferation pathways. So generally, CMYK involvement uh, found, are found in the last stage of this disease, so advanced stage of this disease. And sequencing data has also found out that NF components of NF kappa beta pathway, which is crucial for B cell survival and B cell proliferation is also associated with multiple myeloma. Now let us try to understand the overall B cell developmental trajectory to appreciate the events that goes wrong in multiple myeloma. So B cell development starts in the bone marrow from the hematopoietic stem cells. Then it, uh, it can give rise to lymphoid progenitor, which produce the immature B cells, which eventually leave the bone marrow and go to the uh, external lymphoid tissues like lymph node. Inside the lymph node, there are follicle, which is the zone for B cell to reside. And in the follicle, B cells would actually encounter antigens. Eventually, naive B cell would be activated. In this course of time, they would undergo processes like somatic hypermutation and class switching. At any point of time, you need more clarification on any of these processes. Link would be found in the I button or in description. So after all these important processes like somatic hypermutation and class switching, B cell becomes antibody secreting plasma cell and it starts secreting antibody of a defined isotype, let's say IgG. Okay, so in multiple myeloma, things kind of start with the plasma cell. Plasma cell can clonally expand, so there could be too many plasma cells. That's not really cancerous yet. But 
when there could be too much proliferation then there could be a, let's say one clonal plasma cell is expanding too much that is a clonal malignant transformation of the plasma cell eventually it would give rise to myeloma so the initiation and the progression phase could be separate and it all starts in the germinal center eventually these plasma cells innervate the bone marrow so and lastly when there are too much of plasma cells not only they are overcrowding the bone marrow niche but they are also now found in the blood so there are different progression stage so primary genetic events we already discussed that igh translocation and uh, hyperploidy is uh, is one of the reason and there are secondary genetic events like copy number variations dna hypermethylation acquired mutations these are all secondary genetic events associated with multiple myeloma might not be causal so this is kind of like the genetic portfolio of multiple myeloma development now here we talk about important features of multiple myeloma so excessive immunoglobulins are produced so and all of these ones which are produced are mostly non functional so they have abnormal physiochemical properties and these patients which has multiple myeloma are very susceptible to fever and bacterial infection why is that because humoral immunity which is evoked by the plasma cell derived antibodies are now compromised now non functional antibodies are produced functional antibodies are not produced so that is why so humoral immunity is kind of compromised initially there would be different type of different isotypes of antibody present in the patient's sera but in case of and these these kind of antibodies would try to encounter the bacterial pathogens but in multiple myeloma what happens is there is abnormal expansion of the plasma cells and they produce all uh, abnormal kind of like immunoglobulins which cannot neutralize the pathogens or eliminate the pathogens efficiently which make the patient susceptible to bacterial infection so one of the common complaint in multiple myeloma is the bone pain and generally it occurs most of the cases in the spine sometimes in skull ribs uh, also in basically is the sacral area rarely in big bones like humerus and femur but what is the cause of these bone pain but let me tell you when there has been uh, x rays of skull or any other bone part people found that there are lytic bone lesions as if somebody has punctured holes in those skull so it's a punched hole appearance in these case and it can be found in ct scan as well it's pretty characteristic of multiple myeloma but what is the cause what is its biological meaning it turns out in multiple myeloma the cells which make and break the bone are highly affected cells like osteoblast makes the bone and cells like osteoclast breaks the bone to be very simple now basically osteoclast can uh, break the bone and free up calcium and phosphate and ultimately release it into the blood stream whereas osteoblast can actually deposit calcium into the bone and make the bone so basically osteoblast and osteoclast interact with each other with the rank ligand and rank receptor and osteoblast has the ligand rank l and osteoclast has the receptor rank anyway in general and when this interaction happens then these bone dissolution starts generally osteoblast prevent this kind of interaction by secreting a molecule called opg now what happens in multiple myeloma is there are specific cells which are specific bone marrow uh, fibroblast kind of cells so these stromal bone marrow cells interact with the multiple myeloma cells and trigger them to secrete many factors many factors would not only allow these cells to be proliferate more but also to secrete many other things which can modulate the uh, bone dissolution process first of all it can secrete interleukin 3 that prevent the osteoblast progenitor to osteoblast formation it does prevent the osteoblast progenitor to become osteoblast also it secretes dkk1 which is a wnt modulator and dkk1 actually prevents opg from action once opg is not working properly or opg is down regulated then rank and rank l signaling is upregulated 
Now, we already talked about if there is too much rank and rank ligand mediated signaling, then it would dissolve the bone and cause too much of calcium in the blood. And that's exactly what happens in the multiple myeloma. Overall, we can understand that osteoclastic activity has increased and the osteoblast activity has decreased. This lead to a uh, dissolving of bone, which is detrimental. So there is, would be too much of calcium in the bloodstream right now, leading to hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia has bad consequences. So calcium dysregulation is really sensitive. I mean, really important uh, factor for uh, nervous system functioning. I mean, calcium is really important for neurons to fire. So obviously, there could be neuronal problems associated with hypercalcemia. Also, too much of calcium would change the solute concentration in the blood. It would ultimately lead to dehydration. Not only calcium is elevated in the blood, now the blood is overpopulated with the immature and non-functional antibodies that are produced by these plasma cells. And these are also increasing the osmolarity of the blood. So these kind of protein fragments now becomes an overburden for the kidney. So that triggers the renal insufficiency and in extreme cases, renal failure. Now these light chains, which are small fragments, can eventually be uh, excreted into the urine. And these are known as the Benz-Jones proteinuria. So these protein fragments can be found and detected in urine. And when there are too many of these fragments, they can aggregate among each other and they can form amyloidosis. That is also detrimental for the body. Now let me tell you how the serum electrophoresis profile look like in multiple myeloma patients. This is how it looks like in normal scenario. Here you can see this particular fraction is the GABA globulin fraction which contains all the antibodies. Now there is a huge spike in this gamma globulin fraction because there is overproduction of these insufficient antibodies in multiple myeloma patients. Furthermore, immunofixation electrophoresis can give us a better idea. Where you can look at the normal patient, there is polyclonal IgGs here, but there is a sharp band of one type of IgG in the uh, patient's serum. Also, there is heavy and light chain specific distinct bands found in multiple myeloma patients. So most importantly, there are some numbers that we have to understand. In multiple myeloma, more than 3 grams per deciliter serum IgG and more than 6 milligrams per deciliter of urine benzones protein is kind of diagnostic criteria for uh, the my multiple myeloma. Now, there could be another ways of diagnosing things. For example, bone marrow aspiration biopsy. In this case, this is how the normal uh, biopsy look like. It would have heterogeneous cell population in the bone marrow. But in case of multiple myeloma, these plasma cells are overproduced. Now you can see there are too many plasma cells overcrowding the bone marrow. And this is pretty characteristics of multiple myeloma. So what are the potential treatment options? So prognosis is variable for multiple my myeloma. So recent years, there are new therapeutic approaches. Survival time, it turns out to be four to seven years after diagnosis with treatment. Now, question is how aggressive this progression is. It depends on what kind of genetic association it has. For example, cycling D association um, always is associated with good outcome. Whereas the deletions of 13Q or deletions of 17P regions, these are more aggressive. So it genetic constituent underlying the multiple myeloma kind of dictates its aggression. Recent studies found out that proteasome inhibitors, then thalidomide and its relative compounds and also bisphosphonate are important therapeutic agents that can be used for treatment of multiple myeloma. So I hope this video was useful. At last, we should think about this mnemonic that we talked about. So the four things that are highly important in context of my, uh, multiple myeloma is hypercalcemia. Now we know why hypercalcemia is important. Renal insufficiency, because these Benz-Jones proteins actually made the kidneys overburdened. Anemia and lytic bone lesions, the punched hole appearance.
So I hope this is useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.